Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to talk about underrated accounts on Instagram. And as you know, there's fantastic photographers out there posting amazing images and yet they never really gain traction. So I try to give something back to the community and I hope that you guys follow these ladies and gentlemen, like their work or maybe just have a look and enjoy it, whatever you decide. Tune in, let's check it out. The journey goes on. Here we are on Instagram and the first artist I want to show you is Kies de Rijke. But I figured out I'm definitely not doing a good job at speaking your name. It's actually it should be sounding like this. Gijs. 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 So Gijs de Rijke, an artist from the Netherlands, who I think I found um, because he's a friend of Jonas Piontek and other weather photographers from Germany. And in the beginning, I really wasn't aware about him being such a good photographer. And I find him incredible. This is the profile. He's Gijs de Rijke. And the pictures are nothing but stunning. Really well composed. The processing is really top notch, very natural. And I think he's just doing a fantastic job. You see many windmills, rural scenes. And he goes chasing weather, so he knows when to go out to get the ground fog or to get the higher fog. So it's no wonder that in his profile you'll find images showing like spectacular natural conditions. And I could be clicking through this for, oh, I didn't like this one. I do. Um, for hours and hours and hours. And I'm sure you'll find many, many shots that you find inspiring. He's a geography teacher. And in the free time, he goes out taking landscape shots. Also storms, uh, but in the last years there haven't been as many storms as before. So I hope this season gets any better. Maybe I get some storm shots too. Anyways, Gijs de Rijke, if you're doubting it. Gijs, 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 Okay, next coming up, Morten Eriksen. 77. That's his profile. Morten Eriksen, 77, from Norway, showcasing many shots from Norway, also areas that I tend to shoot, like here, the coast of Bardeid in Lofoten Islands, nice seascapes. Oh, Utterclive. I dropped my camera worth around 3000 bucks in this pool in 2013 it was a total damage and i was really lucky that my insurance covered it but that day you should have seen my face i was really pissed about myself i was so pissed about myself <laughs> but it's a great picture anyways um yep oh nice voland tinden björn tinden So it's funny because many of the places that I see in his profile, I've shot them too. Some of them a bazillion of times, but he has just some very solid in-camera work and the editing is very tasteful too. Not overdone, kind of natural and still moody. Oh, nice. This area in Norway, I really want to visit. I was thinking about going in summer on a road trip, but Thanks to Rona, I won't be able to do that. Um, yes, Dave Brosha. From Canada. So here we have a different kind of photographer. Dave does more the portrait, like environmental portrait stuff. And I found it, oh, just posted. 
and I find his portraits are really neat, like the light gradients, the emotion in the portraits, and also the, the editing. It's really spot on. I absolutely love this one. And he also has something to tell in his captions, so you can go read them. It's very interesting. If you're into portraits, like amazing portraits, just, oh, this one is so good. It's just such a powerful image that I find it super impressive and inspiring. If I was into portrait, I would definitely try to make them look some way like this. Amazing. Dave Brocher. Next one, Mike Boyenton. Yep. Mike Boynton from I don't know from where but the pictures are absolutely stunning like from Mika I had seen the work in coverage about many big awards worldwide she has a very structured clean and natural kind of shooting things and many many people are shooting these rivers in Iceland nowadays it's not as unique anymore as it was, but few of these people get the pictures to be so neat like she does it. It's just fantastic natural abstractions. And also the dune or desert images are very, I don't know how to say, because clean doesn't make them justice. I mean, they are clean, but they are not good because they're clean. It's simply like a very compelling and strict vision that she has. Also, not using the wide angle much, going closer to things and then reducing the scene to the essential shapes and lines. It's what, for me, makes her images very powerful. The natural editing really fits this. And I also think that you should be following her for sure. Here she won the panel awards and not a big surprise that you win big awards with images as good as these. Then we have Chris Kaula. So I started following Chris a while ago after we had some chat about YouTube and Instagram and whatnot. And he's a biologist by profession but he's able to combine his profession with his big passion for nature photography. And he's really artistic sometimes, sometimes less artistic. Let me show you some just fantastic and spectacular images. For example, this one, his Easter shot, or this one here. I find these shots extremely powerful. He has like a really well-growing YouTube channel where he shares his experiences shooting wildlife, shooting birds. I think that's what he also deals with by profession with birds. I'm not sure. Maybe you can comment what you do in your biologic studies if you're interested, Chris. But I find his shots to be very powerful and very appealing. So well deserving some more eyeballs on them. He's from Chile, Benjamin Briones Grandi. I lived in Chile and I've seen some of the places that he features in reality many, many, many years ago. So I was instantly drawn to his shots and he shows places in Chile that are not as touristy and well explored as the Torres del Paine, for example. These are non-iconic spots that he showcases in a very calm and yet still spectacular way. It's just so good. This is like pure art. I love it. Also this here, like a coastal long exposure, but done in a very clever way. I really digged this one as a little mini series. Boom, boom. Just stunning work. Benjamin Briones Grandi or Benjamin Grandi 
as a profile name. Sven is a German artist who is very well known and widely published for his Lost Place pictures. And I mean, it's no wonder why, because he has like a very clean and also natural, but still moody and very inspiring style of showcasing these places where you really have to put in a lot of effort to find the place and then also to get it under the right conditions to showcase the place, the isolation, this kind of rotten feeling. But there's a very, I find there is a lot of beauty to find in these rotten places, the way he photographs them. So the last time I chased the forgotten place was like, I don't know, eight years ago. <laughs> I was so bad in photography, I didn't even remotely get something interesting out of it. I went home with a great feeling, but the pictures were total rubbish. And he's of course a real expert in portraying scenes like this. And I just love his work. And I'm sure you'll find something out there on his profile that you appreciate too. So jump on Sven Fellema's profile. Loscar Numael from Puerto Rico. Also a very different artist to myself, but when I saw these images, I just felt something. So his kind of shooting evokes emotions in me. And that's a strong point that I just love about when I watch other photographers work. They are special, the images. Also, this is a little triptychon of bamboo. Um, some very silent and feelingful images. This one's also epic. So you get what this is all about. This is from Japan. I also think he has some popular spots from Japan in his portfolio that I've seen taking pictures of by other photographers, but he just does it in a very unique way, in my opinion. So, Los Carnumael, get on that profile too. And then, Mind Cage Photography. Björn Pretzel from Germany. He is a fantastic photographer. He comes more from this medley, moody, dramatic side of landscape photography, which you're also maybe seeing by his font. And he hasn't put up so much of his work on Instagram up to now, just 71 images. But I know his pictures since many years. I just met him once in Fotokina seven years ago or something he's a fine guy he also doesn't give too much about building a big instagram profile but i just think he has such a unique kind of shooting and also editing the pictures he takes that he well deserves some more eyeballs on his work and this way maybe we can motivate him to show us more of his pictures because they are fantastic very moody, strong compositions, bang on editing, like it's different to my editing and I wouldn't edit the images the way he does, but that's just his artistic point, his style. And when I see his images, I think it really fits, fits like a charm. Mind cage photography. There you go, guys. I hope that, yep. Now we have Clément Cudere. I'm bad at French, but this guy Clément lives in Iceland, if I'm not mistaken, and he shows Iceland in a very beautiful manner. Very cool editing, some amazing comps. And I just found out about him a few days ago thanks to your story replies mainly. And I think he has some of the best Iceland shots that I've seen in the last time. 
like really really good stuff that I can only recommend you to be following. Clément Cucoudeire. <laughs> and I also wanted to show you Kevin Tierlink, Terlink, I don't know. He's from Belgium, I think, so maybe I should be pronouncing his name it's France, but I don't have a clue how to do that. But here you see his profile. I met Kevin a year ago in the airport in Oslo when he was coming from a trip to Lofoten and I missed him this year. It's a very funny, friendly guy with really dope work who's shooting places that many people shoot, but he's really trying to get his own unique stuff from every place, which I really appreciate. For example, like this one, this is a pool. I know where it is. But he just gave it like a personal twist, a great composition, a great editing, good conditions he had there too. And let me think, I think I really love these lighthouse shots, like bang in your face, moody, great how he picked up in the editing compartment in the last year. Definitely worth a follow guys. Kevin Tierlink. Dr. Christian Hering Junghans from Germany. He's one of my followers who I've been interacting with a lot in the past. And look at this, I think 500 followers. His images are really neat. He has a great way of showcasing places. The natural editing is something I really love. The compositions are creative and clever. The tones of the way he works, the colors are never oversaturated and always a little bit subdued and just beautiful. I love what he does and I think he definitely, I mean, that's a joke, 500 followers. He should have way more. Christian Hering Junghans. Go check him out. That's it for now. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found some artists to follow that you didn't know before. And if you did so, consider doing whatever you feel inclined to do when you enjoy content from somebody. I mean, do I have to like remind you what to do? Eh? I think you know what to do, guys. You know it. Stay safe and see you in the next video. Peace.